Deep right field. Down the line it goes. Castellanos is out of room. It's out of Runner goes. 3 2 pitch hit down the line. Is it there? It is a fair ball into the corner. Off and running. Chew. You Chang around third. He's going to score easily. And in the second. Hit hard. Hit deep. Up and out. Goes a Rosario. And there's a fly ball. Left field. It's deep. It's up. It's gone to the park. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Guardians of the CLE, where our first place guardians are barely hanging on by a thread. Kevin, how are we feeling going into this? Oh, and with me tonight, I have uh, <laughs> my guest co-host, the owner of Believe Land Media, Kevin Sleds. How are you doing, Kevin? I'm doing pretty good. Appreciate you having me on. I know there's going to be a uh, kind of a cycle of uh, guest co-hosts until we nail down a, a new co-host for you, but uh, I'm glad to hop on anytime. And uh, it's nice to come on and talk about a first place team. Yeah, it's definitely much better talking about a team that's in season and doing really well. And, you know, if any of you are a little bit nervous heading into this series finale with the Tigers tonight, I have some promising news for you. Our starter tonight, Cal Quantrill's career record at Progressive Field is 11 and 0. Um, he has a 2.74 ERA with 123 strikeouts and 167 innings pitched and only 41 walks. So maybe Cal Quantrill is what we need to kind of neutralize this Tigers lineup here tonight. Yeah. And he's been lights out his last two starts. So hopefully that, that keeps rolling for him. You know, and before we get into this week recap, I'm glad you mentioned that because early in the season, you know, I, I think a big surprise was how inconsistent the starting rotation was. And, you know, whether it was the velocity drop with Shane Bieber or the home run issues with Tristan McKenzie, you know, the command issues with Cal Quantrill, it just, and, you know, Aaron Savali can't even stay on the field. He's starting to get it, put it together too. But, you know, I want to hear your thoughts, Kevin. You know, it really feels like, you know, this hot streak they've been on, you know, obviously other than the last two games, you know, you can really attribute a lot of that to this starting rotation kind of you know, settling in here, you know, last season they were on the injured list at this time and now they're all really starting to find their groove and it's making a difference. Definitely. I was, I was for sure down on them early in the season because this was supposed to be the strength of our team, this rotation, you know, one of the best in baseball. And, you know, they've really picked it up. Tristan, in my, in my opinion, is, is turning into the new ace of the staff. Um, Bieber's coming back to form, thankfully. Um, like you said, Quantrill has been pitching very well. Savali had a good start coming off the uh, injured list. Hopefully he could stay healthy. So um, <clears throat> I still think he, you know, his best days are ahead of him this season. And then, uh, you know, police acts kind of been up and down, but uh, overall they, they, yeah, they, they've been carrying him. I think uh, through a lot, a lot of these, uh, these winning streaks over the last month or so. Yeah. You know, they put a stat on the broadcast last night too, that the last 10 games, they're five and one with a 1.57 ERA and they pitched 63 innings. So they're getting deep into games, which, you know, especially not having James Karen check in Toronto um, over the past weekend, it's, it's kind of helped the bullpen kind of fall into form, you know, also. And I think heading down the stretch, this starting, this pitching in general is really going to kind of make or break this team. I think our lineup set up in a way where, you know, they've been able to maintain a two month slump from Jose Ramirez. And, if, you know, if you would have told me that heading into the season that after his torrid start, you know, he would just kind of be an average guy the last couple months, I would have thought we'd be 10 games back. Yeah. And you mentioned Karen check and him settling into that eighth inning role has been huge. I know a lot of people were, were worried when he came back after, you know, the, the issues with the, the sticky substance. And after that, he, he kind of lost his curveball, but Looks like he's got it back and that velocity's up and he's pitching really well. Yeah. And as I mentioned, uh, game four against the Tigers begins here in about 20 minutes. And, you know, just before we really get going, I just, I don't understand Terry Francona's lineups. Like, don't get me wrong. <laughs> he is a Hall of Fame manager, you know. But if you look at the lineup tonight, you know, I really don't care that it's a lefty on the mound. I, I couldn't care less. The fact he has Andre Semenes hitting behind Owen Miller in the seventh spot, you know, that means Andre Semenes might not even get a, an at bat until 
the third inning and he is by far the best hitter on this team right now. It's right. mind boggling. <laughs> oh, it is. I know, I know Owen Miller's your boy. i want to make i wanted to make a background of when he fell in the dugout in in (laughs) detroit last week i just wanted to make that a picture as my background i've seen enough not even that but i mean his play at first base and like drop missing balls like repeatedly i I mean i don't i don't i mean i know there's not many options right now with naylor banged up um they don't want to throw jones or benson out there when they've only played a few games at first base that's that's more for next year but man, it's it's just brutal sometimes watching them out there. And that's what kind of shocks me. I would kind of think that with his bad, not only offensively, but like you said, defensively, as bad as, and he'll make the occasional play, but it's more when he fields the ball. He really right. has an issue catching the ball at first base. And it's not like they're low throws or, you know, some crazy play. Like they're balls that hit him right in the glove. I thought with so much of that, with it becoming a pattern that we would have seen one of those guys you mentioned, pick up a first base glove as much as they don't want to, they kind of force their hand there when they didn't trade for a first baseman at the deadline, when not much help is coming at first base in the system. You know, you got John Kenzie Noel, but you know, he's fallen back a little, a little here lately and he's still probably a couple years away. It's definitely a position I thought they'd upgrade. Yeah. And Noel has been playing a lot of outfield as well. They haven't, they haven't really been playing him at first base at all. So I, I'm not sure what their plans are going forward. Maybe maybe it's Benson or Jones next season. But, yeah, they, they <laughs> definitely need to figure it out because I think, uh, you, you know, Naylor's your DH uh, for the immediate end. Uh, yeah, probably, that's probably, probably, probably be. For the next few years because, I mean, it's just – it's tough watching him try to run. And, I, that, you know, that injury was just brutal last year. And, I, you know, I know he's trying, but it's just – it's hard watching him run. <laughs> Yeah, it, it hurts my own legs trying to watch him run. And, you right. know, he made that play, flipped it to Xavier Curry in game two on Monday, and I just cringed. You could just see he immediately was uncomfortable, and it, it was just simply fielding a ball. I mean, I give him credit for even being out there and having the type of impact in clutch situations, especially, that he's been able to have this year. Oh, you're going to have to cut off his leg to keep him out of the lineup, that's for sure. He's He's a competitor. I love him. Yeah, I, I mean, I could just see him in the game last night. Like, it was Owen Miller's turn to bat, and he's probably like, I'm I'm batting right now. Like, this isn't even a discussion. Like, it's late in the game. Put me out there. Right. Grab a bat. I got this. Um, Earlier today, the Twins once again beat the lowly Royals. I believe that was four to nothing, at least last time I checked. And I'm going to be really curious to see how these guys come out and play tonight. You know, they we're going to get into it a little bit more later, but – they faced a ton of adversity in the game last night. You know, Austin Hedges was not silent afterwards about his thoughts on the umpiring, umpiring which I give him a ton, of, a ton of credit for. He didn't care about a fine or anything. He felt it had to be said, you know, but in my opinion, it, it's a lot different being the team that's chasing and then being the team that's chased. And, you know, I have a theory I'll get into later on why I think they're struggling right now against the Tigers, but, you know, as we're getting into the final stretch of the season here, the final 45 games, I believe, who are you most concerned about? Are you most worried about the Twins? Are you most worried about the White Sox? I think the Twins. Me too, and I I hear a lot of people say the White Sox, and there's just something, I'm like, they don't scare me. No, and now they've lost Tim Anderson for a while, so, yeah, I think think the Twins, I, I don't know if they're starting to get it together or if it's just playing the Royals who are absolutely terrible. Yeah. And the twins have really weird splits. They're like unbeatable at home, but on the road, they're terrible. Yeah. If they could play every game at target field, they would have 80 wins by now. Like that's how crazy their splits are, but it's for some reason. And I don't know if it's just me being a homer. I mean, I had this team at 85 wins before the season. So obviously, you know, I felt they'd be competitive, but even with the, the moves the twins made at the deadline, they're not really working out for them. You know, right. Jorge Lopez has blown a couple of saves. Um, Tyler Maley left the start today. He couldn't even hit 90 with his fastball. I don't know if it was some kind of dead arm, um, but they're pitching. It's, it's still not going to scare me. And I think that's going to be their biggest issue. And, you know, like you mentioned with the white Sox, not only did they lose Tim Anderson, but you know, Luis Robert can't really stay on the field either. Aloy Jimenez is always in and out of the lineup. It's like Jose Abreu is a one-man wrecking crew, and 
just with with Tony Larusa, their manager, and just the dumb stuff he does game in and game out, it they just feel like they're going to take themselves right out, out of the race here soon. Right, and yeah, the, the downfall for the Twins will be their pitching staff and their, and their bullpen is is pretty bad. Their lineup scares me though. Jose Miranda yeah. is he's going to terrorize us. Yeah, and, and Luis Arise, I I just I, I wish they would just walk him every time he comes up. Yeah, that guy can just flat out hit. Just smacks the ball into the outfield. It's infuriating <laughs> every time. Um, but as we get into the week that was, um, the Guardians had a great week. You know, they won five out of the six games they played. And, you know, it started off with sweeping these Tigers in Detroit. You know, we headed into Toronto with confidence. And, you know, a week ago tonight, Aaron Savali had his first start off the injur- injured list. He was perfect through innings, lost it a little bit there in the fourth. Um, he allowed two runs, but other than that, I, I think it was a promising start off the IL for Aaron Savali. But this game also had Will Benson's first hit and RBI, which was good to see because, you know, I think at times he seemed a little bit overmatched um, this season. But I, I also think that has to do with, you know, lack of consistent at bats. Right. Yeah, that's no. with, with him and with Tyler Freeman. I mean, you can't expect them to sit on the bench for three days and then come up and, you know, get a couple hits in a game. It, that's tough to do, especially for a young kid who's used to playing every day in the minor leagues. Yeah, and, you know, I, I see what he's doing with Nolan Jones and Oscar Gonzalez. Like, that's one thing. You know, he'll DH Nolan or, you know, they'll he'll platoon him in right, even though he's starting to make Oscar Gonzalez more of an everyday player, which I think he's earned at this point. He's hitting like 370 since coming off the injured list, and he's had a lot more fly balls, which I think is – super promising for him because i i don't think he's realized how much power he can have yet right well you know uh, he he had it in the minors but man that left field wall at progressive field just keeps robbing him well from what i heard when he came up they told him not to worry about trying to hit home runs just go with the pitch hit the ball where it's pitched and you know the home runs will come just put put the bat on the ball and that's what he's been doing i, lo- I loved seeing him go to the opposite field and and yeah. the cra- crazy thing about him is he was not protected on the 40 man roster. Yeah. He, be- he became a minor league free agent. He could have left. He could have went anywhere he wanted to go, but he chose to stay here because he loves this organization and it's, it's worked out. Thankfully <laughs> we didn't lose yeah. him because he- he's looking like the real deal. It's crazy to look back on some of those 40 man discussions we had last off season. Cause I remember talking with people on Twitter who didn't want to protect Stephen Kwan. And I'm like, yeah. that's absolutely insane. Like this, this dude's hit tools are off the charts. Like he's going to, he's going to be a star. He's going to be a 300 hitter. And, you know, obviously it's still his rookie season. His career could go anyway, but I mean, he's showing he can handle himself up here at the major league level. That's for sure. Yeah. I have complete confidence in Quan. That's a, one guy I've followed his whole career throughout the minor league system. And he's done nothing but a hit and you know, be a contact hitter, doesn't strike out, and he's doing the same thing up here that he did throughout the whole system. So I'm not surprised, and I think he is who he is. That, that He's he's going to be floored around uh, 300 for his career. Yeah, and that's one thing I love about, you know, this whole playing the kids mentality that they've had is, you know, these guys have all played together throughout the whole system. You know, Tyler Freeman gets called up. He says Stephen Kwan's the first guy he went to go talk to. You know, we saw Will Benson and Stephen Kwan celebrating Andre Semenis' home run the other day, like kids in a candy shop. Yeah. And it's just the camaraderie this team has because they come up and they're comfortable, right? They've they've known these guys for years, and it's so cool to see them just the the amount of success that they're having when almost every single, you know, national media outlet had them near the bottom of the Central Division. And it's August 17th, and we're in first place. Maybe barely hanging on, but we're here. Right. And they're doing exactly what I wanted them to do because, you know, a lot of us wanted them to make a deal or two to strengthen the team, but they chose to go the young route. And, you know, if they didn't make any trades, that's why I wanted to see a big influx of, of the young guys that we've been waiting to see who are, or have nothing left to prove down at AAA. Yeah, that's what made last year so frustrating was that it was Yu Chang, Bobby Bradley, Bradley or Bobby Bradley, Bradley Zimmer, Oscar Mercado, and it's guys, Harold Ramirez even. Yeah. There was, you know, no sight of pros- real prospects anywhere. And I think they had kind of a 
quicker leash on some of these guys this year, which, you know, Bradley Zimmer opening day, Yu Chang, not far, you know, right. not far behind him. And I think that's when I'm like, okay, this season might have a different feel to it. And not just that, but the 40 man situation they were in last off season and are going to be facing it yet again, this coming off season. Yeah. I'm really surprised they didn't move a few prospects at the deadline, but I mean, it seems I, I know they have one of the best minor league systems in the league, but it seems they they tend to overvalue prospects at times, and I yeah. they like to hoard them. <laughs> but you can't have fifty percent of your forty man roster as prospects. So, yeah, especially guys like John Kenzie Noel who aren't going to see the major league field and you know a couple years. It's okay once in a while, but right. now you're kind of in a tough spot this off season when the whole league knows you either got to add these guys or that, you know, you're going to lose them in the roll five. So we'll just take our chances in the roll five and see what happens. We're not going to give you anything significant for these guys that we know you have to do something with. Right. Good point. Um. So last Wednesday, so they scored, they scored their runs early and that was the game where the last 20 were retired. They went hitless the last six innings of that game. And, you know, James Karen had his, madman outing that night loaded the bases wiggled out of it struck out the side the bullpen was outstanding that night they had to come in kind of early just because Savali was on a pitch count but once again you know they're up for the task and it's not just Emmanuel Classe and a bunch of guys anymore and I think that's what's so impressive is Eli Morgan we went from you know all-star to he needs to go to Columbus like yesterday. And even with that, losing their best setup, man, they were able to get guys like Nick Sandlin, Trevor Steffen, James Karinchak. They're they're able to get these guys right in AAA and bring them right back up. And, you know, they're the main forces in this bullpen right now, building that bridge to the best closer in baseball. Yeah, without a doubt. You know, Steffen's been been pitching pretty well. I know he had a, had a rough outing his last time out, but uh, it was nice to see Sandlin go down and get himself straightened out and, and come back up as the pitcher we we all expected him to be. Yeah, when, when Sandlin's on, his stuff is lethal. Like, yeah. he's nearly unhittable. Yeah, his slider's nasty. It, it's He goes through these phases where he doesn't trust his stuff and he's nibbling, nibbling, and he, he walks everybody, and that's what was happening – to him earlier this season, right? He's nibbling and he's walking all these guys and, you know, he's not putting himself in a position to have any success. And he was only in Columbus for like a week or two. Right. And he was right back up here. Um, and we had him and Karen check trying to figure it out at the major league level at the same time. And, you know, I guess that goes with the philosophy of what this season was going to be. We're, you know, we're going to let these young guys play and we're going to let them work through their kinks. And it's only going to benefit us, you know, whether we make the playoffs this year or it's building for next year. This is all valuable experience. Even guys like Tyler Freeman not playing every day. They're in a they're in a playoff race exactly. at the major league level. And that's going to be big time. Um, last Thursday was the 10 inning game that we ended up winning um, four to three. But this is the game. Um, it, it's it's going to end up burning us, you know later on, but Eli Morgan comes in with a five run lead, um, loads of the bases, you know, couldn't get the job done. We had to burn a manual class. A. Wait, I don't think that was the extra inning game, but the, he had to come in and that kind of screwed us later on. Right. Right. Because of the extra, you know, we didn't have class a for that extra inning game. Um, and we saw it may not be a big deal at the time, but that's why it's so imperative, you know, that we get Eli Morgan, right? Like I get wanting the kids to play and that's why it's a tough situation because I do think Eli Morgan can be a decent major league reliever. I just think he either needs to get a third pitch or he needs to somehow add some velo on that fastball because right now the whole league is just sitting on his change up. Yeah. He, he definitely needs a third pitch mixed in there because like you said, they're sitting on his change up. That was so nasty early on, but uh, I think that the league is definitely caught up to him. Yeah, so that game on Thursday, the getaway day game, ended up going into extra innings because Emmanuel Classe wasn't available. You know, that that rough outing, Trevor Steffen couldn't get it done there. Um, he allowed two to score in the ninth inning. Um, and El De Los Santos, who's been quietly really, really good, um, was able to come in and finish that inning off. But 10th inning, Oscar Gonzalez, ice in his veins, just 
simple single to left center ends up bringing Jose home. And it's just, these kids don't get rattled, you know, in the biggest moments. No, they don't. But uh, I, I was a little scared in the, the bottom of the tent with Brian Shaw closing it out. But uh, oh yeah, you got the job done, <laughs> thankfully. It's like, I think we all just can't wait to get Brian Shaw off this team, but he somehow keeps just coming in in the biggest moments, like starting those games, even just going a couple innings. Like he just gets the job done somehow. And it's like so infuriating because Tito will ruin it and try and get him to go two innings and it blows up every <laughs> single time. Yeah. It, it feels like he's been here for like 15 years. Yeah. <laughs> like he was sitting down on the broadcast the other day with Andrew Miller and Cody Allen. And I'm like, Oh my God, this dude has been here forever. Like he left for Colorado for a brief moment, but right. he was right back here. It really does feel like he's going to have a statue out in heritage <laughs> park when he's, when it's all said and done. Um, so they swept the Tigers, then they went on to Toronto. And honestly, Kevin, I was like, just win a game. Yeah. Right. Just find a way to win a game. And this is where I'm like, you know, we're probably not going to leave Toronto in first place. It'll all even out down the stretch. Twins were playing the Los Angeles and Los Angeles Angels, who are just a train wreck right now. I mean, they need to get Shohei Otani out of there. They yeah. MLB needs this guy in the playoffs and he is not going to the playoffs. Um, in Los Angeles, it's just a nightmare, but they found a way they won two out of three against the twins. Um, our guy, Emilio Pagan gave up the game winning home run <laughs> to Tyler, to Taylor Ward. Um, one of the games in that series. And I mean, he's in the running for guardians MVP this season. Like we wouldn't be in first place without him. <laughs> right. Everybody in Cleveland is super thankful for that. But you know, this young fun guardians team had other ideas right? Friday, Cal, seven, seven, one hit innings. He had seven strikeouts and only one walk. And that's why I'm glad he's on the Hill tonight. Cause he seems to have found his command. And that was the biggest knock against him, right? He's walking too many guys. Then he'll give up a home run. And it's not just a solo shot. It turns into a two, three run shot because he lost his command. But um, also in this game, Jose Ramirez broke out of it a little bit. He had a three run homer early in that game. Um, which was great to see. Um, Josh added a couple RBIs. Ahmed Rosario added a couple RBIs. And, you know, this one was over early. And, you know, Cal was able to just shut down that really good Blue Jays lineup. And that was our sixth win in a row at this point, which I'm like, all right, we got the one win I was expecting. Not sure how the rest of the weekend's <laughs> going to go, but I'm not going to be mad. Yeah, that was definitely Quantrill's. Best outing of the year, in my opinion. I mean, he was dominant. Yeah. And, you know, it was nice to see Jose break out a little bit and get the home run and, and drive in four runs. And uh, Josh Naylor with the opposite field, two run homer. Yeah. After that he was game, he jacked up to be he back was. home doing that. And I was on the same mindset. I'm like, let's, let's get one out of three. But after that game, I'm like, yeah. you know what? We, we got a shot to get two games, a really good shot to get two games out of this, which is be outstanding. Yeah. And I think that. You know, when we struggle like this, you know, like we are right now against the Tigers, I look back at series like Toronto and Houston the week prior when we were able to take a couple from them. And this team has proven they can beat good teams, right? right. It's like I almost feel like they play down to their competition sometimes. It and does. it's so weird to say, if, but this Detroit series I was worried about for a couple of reasons. Not just, oh, look, we're in first place now. We just beat the Blue Jays. Like, <laughs> we can kind of put it in neutral for a couple of days. That can happen to a young team. And also looking ahead to sh the Chicago White Sox this coming weekend. Oh, it's the team right behind us breathing down our necks. It's really starting to feel like they overlooked these Tigers just a little bit. Yeah, I think there is a little bit of that playing up and down to your competition going on with this team. Um, and yeah, I think they did may, may have overlooked the Tigers a bit because I, I was, you know, hoping going into this four game series to take three, but you know, we got to hope yeah. for the split tonight and the, you know, these are the teams you got to beat and, and maintain that lead. And, but of course you, you still have what eight or nine games against Minnesota coming up in the, in the yeah. next month. So that'll be, that'll be uh huge for sure. Yeah. And it's just before we get back to Toronto, it's the weirdest thing. This game's going to decide the season series against Detroit like it I felt like we just won like six straight against them but right and they we, had we've our owned number them. <laughs> yeah yeah this year yeah, they have. 
And for years, you're right. We've owned them for years. And for some reason this year, we have just struggled with them. And, you know, I guess every team has that that one team that for some odd reason, like Baltimore used to do it to the Yankees and the Red Sox a lot. They just couldn't beat Baltimore for some reason. So you would have loved to get three out of four, especially with Houston forgetting how to play baseball against the White Sox this right. week. <laughs> like Jordan Alvarez, I don't know if you saw it, his at bat to end the game last night, it looked identical to Miles Straw's last night. Like oh, identical really? balls in the dirt, half swings. Jordan Alvarez looked like Miles Straw. That's the kind of look the Guardians are having wow. right now. <laughs> um, but back to Toronto. So Saturday, Tristan, another strong outing. Um, but again, that home run ball continues to hurt him. He'll pitch a gem and one pitch decides the whole game. Uh, he gave up two solo shots. Jimenez drove in the only run of the game in the first inning. That was all they had cooking on Saturday. Um the Guardians had a chance in the eighth inning. The Jays, you could tell the Jays really wanted to win this game Saturday. They kind of treated it like a playoff game. You know, they had been struggling coming into this one. They're trying to break their streak. Um, they brought Jordan Romano in in the eighth inning. And, you know, they had some luck. They got a couple guys on, but Oscar Gonzalez couldn't get to him. Um, but you can't win them all. And this was the game that Taylor Ward um, walked off the Twins. So no harm, no foul. You know, I, I wasn't feeling too down. After this one, I mean, it felt like a playoff game. This was a game that had that feel to it. It did. And and what drives me crazy with Tristan sometimes is he could be looking so dominant and then he'll get an 0-2 count and just groove a fastball right down the middle that, that they just crush. It, that seems that, that to bite him in the ass more times than not. Yeah, and I've I've seen him in person a couple times, and his fastball just has no movement to it. <clears throat> yeah, it's so straight So he's not arrow. a guy – yeah, it's just right there. He's not a guy that can leave fastballs over the middle of the plate. And, you know, that's why he's towards the top of the leaderboard right now and home runs allowed as a starting pitcher. But all his other stats look fantastic. If he could just find a way to control that home run ball. I mean, he has ace type potential without oh, a yeah. doubt. And he, yeah. I mean, he'll be huge if they end up making the playoffs coming in in game two. Right. It'll come. Yeah, he'll get there. Um, Sunday, big win, seven to two. Um, and this marked, you know, we haven't won a series since, or we haven't lost a series since the end of June, June 26th. Um, that'll change obviously today because the best we can do is split this series. Um, but I, I knew we were going to be cooking this game. Ahmed smoked that home run to center field. What the hell do you make of his power right now? What, what is he eating for breakfast? I don't know. I've been waiting for it <laughs> to be honest with you. Yeah, like Quan's another guy. I know he only has a couple home runs, but we're starting to see a little bit of his power. And I think he's yeah. a guy, you know, who could hit 10 plus home runs yeah, once he's, he's got, really settled in. He's, he's, he's a small statured guy, but he's got some pop. Yeah. And, you know, both of those guys at the top of the lineup in front of Jose, you, you really can't ask um, for much more. And honestly, outside of this, Rosario's kind of slumping a little bit, but. That's what I try to tell people. That's what you get with him. He'll have a month where he's absolutely on fire. Then he'll be down for a few weeks. Won't do a single thing. He'll hit into double plays, actually. And that's, I think, the biggest downfall of him being in the two hole is when Quan does get on base, Rosario has a tendency to swing early in the count and hit into those double play balls, which just wipes away any RBI opportunity for Jose Ramirez, which right. is kind of a bummer. Yes, it is. Um, but yeah, Shane Bieber won his fourth straight, went seven innings, allowed two runs, six strikeouts, no walks, which is good to see. Um, and he, I mean, he's just on fire right now. He's finding a way to pitch, you know, his velocity was up a little bit in this start, which is good to see. I think he was sitting like 93, I think he even hit 94 a couple of times, which is a big improvement from that 91, you know, he's kind of been sitting at all season and it, it just shows what that, you know, just a couple miles an hour does for some of these guys. Right. Um, but the Guardians had headed back to Cleveland. They had these four against Detroit before a humongous series against the Chicago White Sox this weekend. Um, and game one was great. You know, we mentioned Savali made his first start a week ago against the Tigers. He was set to go in game one on Monday and he was outstanding. Um, six innings pitch. He had ten strikeouts, which is one shy of his career high, I believe. Only gave up three hits in this one. He gave up a run in the first inning. Um, he was still kind of settling in, but he was didn't allow anything after that. That, I think, 
was huge to see. Yes, it was. Um, yeah, I, I'm still a big believer in, in Aaron Savali. I still think he can be a, a solid pitcher. So I'm hoping he can stay healthy the rest of the year and, and show what he can do. Um, yeah, you know, Nolan Jones, uh, the strikeout bug is really biting him now. I know he struck out yeah. three three times in four at-bats that game, left six men on base. Um, <clears throat> he killed us in that yeah. seven hole. And I hate to see it because – I know what he's capable of, and I know they've been waiting a long time on this kid. Right. But he's got to learn. To, he's got to show he can hit that off-speed stuff. Exactly. He it's just to, he's not getting anything hard right now. He needs to watch Oscar, Oscar Gonzalez a little bit more. <laughs> his yeah, approach. who would have thought we'd be talking about that with plate discipline? Exactly. Right? <laughs> it's wild. And I don't even think Oscar Gonzalez has had a walk since he's came back off the injured list. But he can he can reach that bat out. And just hit the ball the other way. Yep. And I think that's something he's been able to add working with this major league hitting staff that, you know, Nolan's going to have to work on that. The league, it's a, it's a game of adjustments. We we saw Quan struggle in May. Yeah. Um. You know, we've seen these. I mean, Andre Semenes had an awful year last year, right? right? He made adjustments. And that's what it's all on Nolan now. If you want the playing time, you got to make those adjustments because you're not going to get any fastballs till you show you can hit that off speed stuff. And what a big three-run homer by Jimenez off uh, Andrew Chafin, who's one of the top setup men in, in all of baseball. Kid clutch, they're calling him, right? Yes, he is. It's just it's I it's he's one of those guys I'm running out of words to even describe what he's meant to this team. And I'm not gonna lie to you, but I didn't have that high expectations for him. I thought him and Rosario could just kind of plug the gaps until Rocchio and Freeman could kind of take over that middle infield in 23, but you don't now sitting here on August 17th. I don't know how you don't talk extension with Andres before he just gets even better. Oh, you have to at this point. I mean, he's at the top of all second base leaderboards. Right. Like I believe advanced it. analytics, just regular, regular ass stats, everything. And it, it wouldn't even be any different if he were playing at the shortstop position. That's just how good he's been. And to see him doing this so young and, you know, looking back at the Francisco Lindor trade here and all the people who just thought we got robbed and seeing, you know, how big a contributor is Andre Semenes and Ahmed Rosario. And, you know, I, I was like, get Ahmed Rosario out of town. Right. I'm like, just bring the kids up. Let's see Gabriel Arias. Let's keep this train moving. But I'm actually glad they didn't move him at the deadline. You know, as many double plays as he hits into, he's a stabilizing force in this lineup. And I think, he's improved his defense immensely. And I think he doesn't get enough credit for that because he was awful last year. Right. Yeah. And it's turning out to be a pretty good deal, even though Lindor and Carrasco are having good years this year with, with the Mets. Um, Jimenez was the key piece in that deal and he's living up to expectations now. And like you said, the Rosario is just having an outstanding, outstanding year and has really improved his defense this year uh, from last year. And then the, we still got the two young kids, Josh Wolf and as I, Isaiah Green, who are yeah. at Lynchburg. So they're they're young, so it's going to be a while before they see them. But they they both have some potential as well. Yeah, and you mentioned that that game running home home run by Andres last night, and after the sixth inning, he's hitting three eleven with seven home runs, a triple, five doubles, twenty six RBIs, and sixteen runs, and that's in crunch time, the sixth inning or later. Yeah. So that's just things you love to see. Definitely. Uh, what'd you think of Xavier and Curry game two I, Monday night? I thought he pitched pretty well. I didn't, I didn't think he did, he did too bad. Um, I love the kid. I, I hope, you know, he gets a shot to, to make the rotation next year. Um, <clears throat> this, he needs a great kid. He's a competitor. And it, you talked about guys, you know, coming up and that have played together and friends like he and Will Benson have been friends for a long time. So, you know, they were both excited to see each other and Benson was excited. And how about the, uh, did you see the, a group of Columbus Clippers that came up at yeah. the game with Richie and a bunch Richie of the other guys. Was there. Yeah, so that that was cool to see coming up to support their guy. And I mean, Richie put his pride to the side for that one, which you love to see. Like he was up playing on this team not too long ago. He's <laughs> like, "Yeah, I'll go sit in the stands and watch my boy make his debut." Right. That just shows the impact a guy, you know, Xavier Curry has had on his teammates. But I don't think he pitched bad at all. I think that was the luckiest game of baseball I've ever seen. Like Detroit's breaking their bats, blooping balls in, and they're just finding grass. Yeah. I, I don't think it's really anything Xavier 
Curry did wrong. I think he actually pitched really well, and I wouldn't even mind seeing him get another shot over Zach Plesak. I think, why not, right? What's right. Zach Plesak giving you right now? I know he's had a couple of good starts, but, I mean, stats show he's, like, the luckiest unlucky pitcher ever. <laughs> Right, like much. even when he's having success, he shouldn't be having success. Right. It goes back to early in the season. I used to talk about it on this podcast all the time. I'm like, don't let him fool you. Those those are loud outs. Those are like a hundred plus mile an hour long fly balls. Like exactly. it's only a matter of time before these guys start finding the stands. Right. Um, so yeah, why not? But that game too. So for some reason. Tito decides to bring Eli Morgan in and I get wanting to get him some work, but it cannot happen in that game at that time. No, it, He found a way to suck every single drop of life out of the entire stadium, including his own dugout. I mean, Oscar <laughs> Gonzalez dropped a fly ball after that. Everybody's heads were up their ass. They could not believe that Eli Morgan just came in and gave, gave up back-to-back solo home runs. Like it was nothing. Yeah, I, like I like you said, do. yeah. The, the, I mean, the Leafs caught up to him. I mean, I don't know if you do what you do did with Sandlin and send him down, and hopefully he can get himself worked out. Um, you know, Cody Morris is has been pitching really well since coming back. He's a guy you could see possibly come up and and help in the bullpen. And I know Cody hasn't pitched on back to back days yet, but I don't think he necessarily needs to. No, I don't think that should really prevent them from calling him up. I mean, he's hitting the upper nineties right now. Um, usually pitches a couple innings, but even if he didn't pitch a couple innings, you know, even if he pitches every third day or something, I think he could be a serious weapon out of that bullpen heading into this final month of the the season. And I don't think you should let a guy like Eli Morgan hold you back from making a move like that. Right. Yeah. Morris has a great arm. I, I can't wait to see him up here. Yeah, and he, I mean, he's already on the 40, his rehab's, you know, almost done down there. So I would not be shocked um, to see him up here before the end of the year. Um, but this is the game I mentioned earlier. Tito left Sean an inning too long. Um, Quan and Benson nearly ran into each other, dropped a fly ball. Shaw had a wild pitch. It's just chaos all over the place. And that's all she wrote. But, yep. you know, to wrap it up here tonight, we got the umpire game last night. Oh. I mean, of course, please Hack would be on the mound first of all, but <laughs> my biggest issue with this call is I don't think it's meant to be challenged all like that. Like, I think this whole play at the plate thing is the catcher, you know, blocking the runner's path. I think it's meant to be like, what do you see in that moment with your eyes? And let's be honest, like Javi Baez <laughs> is slow and he's lazy. Yeah, He, he, flip, he kind of flailed out of the way of that just because he had a path to the base. He yeah. he could have got to the base if he wanted to. I mean, that was clear in all the still shots and it completely changed the complexion of this game. And it was in the first inning. Yeah. And then obviously right old police And then he gave up the, the home run to the, uh, the rookie who was hitting bat under a hundred. <laughs> and that's the biggest issue that I have with him is he gets rattled. You know, he has a bad call, a bad defensive play behind him. And he doesn't compose himself quick enough. He gets rattled and there's tends to be further damage after whatever it was that pissed him off. Right. I get Hence it. But the Jersey game. Yeah. You the can't, Jersey you can't let it bother you. Game. Yeah. Um. So again, it, it's pretty much a must. I hate to say must win in, in August, but it's pretty much a must win game tonight. You got to You got to put the wheels back on, get back on track before Chicago comes in this weekend Got to find a way to split this series, especially with the Twins already winning today. But um, I think it's possible we win two out of three this weekend. I'm going to leave Savali versus Cease kind of up. I'm not going to be mad if we lose that game. Dylan Cease is dominating the entire league this year. Yeah, he's a um, stud. But Friday, we got Tristan versus Lance Lynn. I mean, we own him. Yeah. He's kind of cooked. Saturday, we got Bieber versus Johnny Cueto. It's Bieber day, so I feel good about it. But Johnny Cueto... You know, look out for him. He's been pitching a lot better for the White Sox, as all their pitching has over yep. this little win streak they've had. Yeah, he he Cueto can be tough for sure. And he, like you said, you know, Cease is a stud. So you'd like to be up two games to nothing going into that game for sure. Yeah, absolutely. So 
thank you all for listening here tonight. We'll, you know, get off here and watch this game and hope that Cal Quantrill can kind of right the ship here and the <laughs> offense can get going a little bit. But thank you all for listening tonight. Um, and we will see you next week. Stay safe, stay healthy, and go Guardians. Go Guardians. <laughs>